The National Book Awards are particularly exciting because until the moment that the title of the winner leaves the judge's mouth, no one but the five-person panel of judges knows the decisions. Not the foundation board, not its staff, not me. The judges made their final decisions only earlier today, so everyone is hearing it here at the same time for the first time. The winners in each category will be announced by the chair of the respective category presented in reverse alphabetical order. These categories are young people's literature, translated literature, poetry, nonfiction, and fiction. And the first of the lot is near and dear to my heart, and that's the National Book Award for Young People's Literature. Young readers need books that reflect their own experiences while also expanding their horizons. This year's finalists for the National Book Award for Young People's Literature include a novel in verse about a black teenager's formative years, a graphic novel documenting a refugee's journey, an imagining of Japanese-American teenagers and their incarceration during World War II. From Eastern Europe to the Bayou of Louisiana, these finalists offer young people the whole entire world. The panel chair for this year's National Book Award for Young People's Literature is Joan Trigg, writer and general manager at Red Balloon Bookshop. Good evening, I'm Joan Trigg, and I'm honored and happy to be here on behalf of the Young People's Literature Committee. Thank you all for joining us tonight. During these months of COVID stress and disruption, I had the possibly sanity-saving privilege of having a large stack of books to read, which reminded me how books can both take us out of this world and make us more able to live in it. Thank you to the National Book Foundation, and especially to Lisa Lucas and Anna Dobbin for their flawless leadership through an incredibly changed process. I also had the exceptional privilege of meeting weekly with a group of thoughtful, passionate readers who understand the significance of good literature for kids. I thank Colleen A.F. Venable, Ebony Thomas, Neil Schusterman, and Randy Rebuy for their insight, for their kindness, and for their commitment not so much to criticize, but to find merit in each book we read, which led to many hours of lively conversation. When I look back on the year 2020, the year I'm sure we'd all like to edit, I'm grateful that I will have these memories to keep. Our five National Book Award finalists are King and the Dragonflies, by Case and Calendar, published by Scholastic Press. We Are Not Free, by Tracy Chi, published by Dutton Books, or sorry, published by Houghton Mifflin, Mifflin Harcourt. Everybody Looking, by Candace Elo, published by Dutton Books. When Stars Are Scattered, by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed, published by Dial Books for Young Readers. And The Way Back, by Gabrielle Savitt, published by Alfred A. Knopf. I'm happy to announce this year's National Book Award for Young People's Literature goes to Case and Calendar for King and the Dragonflies. Case and Calendar, King and the Dragonflies, Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Inc. King and the Dragonflies hooks the reader from its first haunting sentence, 12-year-old King's voice rings true, and not a single line feels superfluous. Themes of toxic masculinity, racism, and self-discovery slowly come into focus as King himself begins to understand the layers of hurt and hope in this world. Case and Calendar has created a timeless story that is painfully timely, one that will lodge in your gut and grow. I'm trying not to. Can you hear me? Thank you so much for this honor. I am trying not to cry, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> So 
Thank you, National Book Foundation and panel of judges for this incredible honor. This is an interesting year to win the National Book Award for Young People's Literature. This has been the hardest, most painful, most devastating year in many people's memories in our lifetime. But this has also been an empowering year for many, a year when we're forced to pause and reflect not only on ourselves, but on the society we live in to look at the wounds, internal and external, and to heal and to grow. I know I'm not the only one who believes that these next generations are the ones who are meant to change everything. Young people already have changed the world in so many ways, and it's an honor and a privilege to be given the platform and the opportunity to help in their guidance through the magic of story and to be impacted by the power of young people too. As an author for young readers, I often talk about the necessary balance between pain and hope and joy. This has been a difficult year, but I'm grateful for this moment of joy too. I'd like to thank my agent, Beth Phelan and agency Galton Zacher. Ooh, try not to cry. Um, Beth, you are a rock and I'm so grateful for you. <sighs> So grateful for you on um, every day of this writing journey. Uh, I want to thank Scholastic, my amazing editor, Andrea Davis Pinkney, along with Jess Harold, the incredible marketing and publicity team, Emily Hedelson, Lizette Serrano, Danielle Yadao, uh, Talon Salvati, and David Levithan for his guidance and support. I want to thank my family, Dad, Auntie Jackie, Curtis, Memory, Martha, Lisa, you know there's too many of us for me to name all of you, but Thank you, I love you so much. Thank you for your support. Of course, I wanna thank my mom who has been there for me um, and this little dream of mine since the very first moment I wrote my little picture book about that cow through every worry and every hope I still have. Thank you.